Good morning, this is Sabra bringing you today's Whole Story devotional. Do you have something that triggers a memory, takes you back? This picture of Jesus does that for me. More on that later. Today's reading is Revelation 21, John's vision of a new heaven and new earth. As I got to thinking about John's vision, I wondered, how was he able to have such a clear picture of what he felt God was saying to him? My feeling is, he was so connected to the Father and to the Holy Spirit that he was able to relay that in the book of Revelations. John describes a holy city unlike one ever created. Its brilliance was like that of a very precious jewel. The city did not need the sun or the moon to shine on it, for the glory of God gives it light. Wow. He will wipe away every tear from their eyes. There will be no more death or mourning, or crying, or pain. So as I continue to think about John immersing himself, I wonder to myself, how can I immerse myself? What can I do to draw closer to, closer to the Lord? My thought is prayer, which brings me to the story about my grandmother and the picture of Jesus. So when I was about five or six years old, we would go to my grandmother's house up the street most weekends, and I would always want to spend the night. And so when I got to spend the night and sleep in her king-size bed with her, she would often wake up before me. I would go looking for her, and she would be in her sunroom in her big pink chair, reading the Bible, studying God's Word, and having her quiet time. So as long as I were promised to stay quiet, I would snuggle up next to her, and up on the bookshelf was that picture I showed you of Jesus smiling down at me. So it's interesting how much that quiet time that she had, that I sat with her on those weekends, really impressed upon me. So years later, fast forward, maybe even 10 years ago, I was encouraged by Father Nigel Mumford. I was taking his prayer class with a bunch of others, and we were encouraged to take 20 minutes a day to sit quietly before the Lord, just sit quietly and listen and take notes on whatever we heard. Initially, 20 minutes seemed like this insurmountable amount of time. But I found the more I did it, just like a muscle that gets stronger when you work out, the more I did it, the easier it got. It was fascinating as we all came back together to the class and shared what we had heard from our impressions of that quiet time. It was personalized to each one of us, and it really walked away with a really... Um, strong impression of how important that quiet time was. So as I continue to study prayer going forward, there's a wonderful book that I would encourage you to take a look at if you're interested in learning more. It's called How to Pray, A Simple Guide for Normal People by Pete Gregg. Pete breaks things down into a simple acronym that he uses P-R-A-Y. P, to pause. I love the idea of pausing. So often we jump into things and we want to race to it. We want to just ask God right away, I need this. And there are times when you just need to cry out to the Lord and say, please help me. But often if you just pause and allow there to be some quiet, similar to the quiet time I was talking about with my grandmother, just pause. The Lord has a still quiet voice that you can hear. And he gives you that peace to allow you to go to the next step. So the R stands for rejoice. I love the idea of rejoicing, thanking the Lord for anything and everything. It sets your heart and your mind in a place that allows you to really fully experience God's presence by being thankful. And sometimes there are times you think, I don't know what to be thankful for. Look out your window. Is it shining, the sun shining? Be thankful. Is it raining? Be thankful that it's watering the plants. Whatever is there such a circumstance? There is always something to be thankful for. So normally, we, we have already covered P and we covered R. Normally, the next would be A. I like to put the Y before the A, Y being yield. Yielding for me is this time of confession, a time of asking for forgiveness. There are things that are weighing on me to kind of get the slate clear. Tell Lord, gosh, I'm really sorry I offended this person. Or if someone's offended you, you really want to ask and forgive them in your heart. So it's just a time to um, think about yielding to the Lord. So the last step, the A, which I'm calling the last step, 
is the asking. It's the one so much of us, so many of us are most familiar with asking. Lord, please help me. This morning I was walking and praying and I was saying, Lord, please heal my friend's husband of MLS. Lord, please comfort my daughter who just found out that she needs to move from a dorm room with her roommate, and she's a freshman, to a roommate, to a room by herself. Lord, please be with my son who's up in Charlottesville. Comfort him as he is diving into his schoolwork. Comfort my husband in his daily work. There are so many things. Each day brings new things. So as we get to scripture here, let me read in Philippians 4, 7. I love this. Do not be anxious about anything, but in every situation, by prayer and petition, with thanksgiving, present your requests to God. And the peace, which transcends all understanding, will guard your hearts and your minds in Christ Jesus. Just as John immersed himself, I encourage each of us to immerse ourselves through prayer and quiet time. In 2 Corinthians 3, it says we are transformed into his image with ever-increasing glory, which comes from the Lord, which is the Spirit. I pray today that you experience Christ in a whole new way, that you feel his presence with you, abiding you, with you, and giving you peace. God bless you, and thanks for spending time with me. Take care. Bye-bye.